Welcome back to Sandown. Well, will it be Mark Scape? Three from three. It's looking pretty good for him so far. Let's have a look at the grid. And of course, you can check where they finished in race two as well as they come around to grid up. Of course, the Mobile One boys will start from the front row yet again. Radisic, his first top three finish, alongside Garth Tander, who stormed very strongly in that last one. Seat Bright, Murphy and Faulkner. Johnson and Perkins out of row five. Russell Engel alongside Cameron McLean, one of the privateers. Cam McConville and Thomas Mazira. Mark Larkham and Tony Longo who had a broken tail shaft in pick two. And a pretty impressive run from Cam McConville today. Barguana, who has had another stint of bad luck. Forbes apparently has come into the pits. Faulkner, rather, uh, word from the ground. Crompton back in 19th from McDougal. Ashby, Noski, Wheel and Todd Kelly going backwards as the day goes on. Yeah, Crompton's been in the wars today too. David Parsons, Chris Smurton, big field of V8s. Right back to John Bow on the last position of the grid. He threw a fan belt in heat too that damaged all the car's electrics and put him out of the race. So he's going to start right from the back. There we go. Watch Paul Radisic in this one. We saw in race two his car is equally as quick, or he, he was doing uh, comparable and also quicker lap times than the Mobile One boys, so we'll wait and see. There's the green from the back. This is the third and final race of round six of the Shell Championship Series. Watch car 18, the Shell Helix Falcon. If he gets a good start, it'll be on in the first corner. Away we go. Lounge oh, the way Tanda, to the start. Tanda, great start. Look at that. Yes. Scott Tanda. Oh, look, it's getting squeezed. Radisic didn't get away to the best start. Wright has come up on him, and the door was shut very uh, promptly uh -huh. for Garth Tanda in the Valvoline Cummins <laughs> Commodore. And it's Craig Lounds who will hit the first corner. Yeah. Oh, DJ. See Lowndes move across and close the door there very effectively. Garth Tander got a great start. He was the beat in the HRT sandwich until they moved across and shut the door very firmly. That puts Tander up to third. Paul Radisic up into fourth. Great he's start. Got a DJ he got there. Yeah, Johnson up there too. So that two shell forwards having a very competitive run. Johnson has come from ninth up into fifth. Oh, and man. around goes. That's uh, Wayne Wakefield. Yeah, in the Baxter car, the Gary Baxter car. He's filling in for Gary. So they roar up the back straight, sorting themselves out on the opening lap. A tremendous start, as we said, by Dick Johnson. Here's your lead trio. This time it is Craig Lowndes who leads the way from Mark Scaife, Garth Tander. A slight gap back to the two shell helix cars. Great to see Dick up there. Oh, look. Uh, Lowndes having a go there. Side the by side. Oh, look at this. Oh, look at Scaife. that. Scaife. Yeah, he doesn't want to finish second today. Boy, oh, boy, he's pushing his teammate pretty hard. <laughs> The switchback now as Lowndes tries to get a real fast run as they come out of Simoco turn onto the main straight. But look at Garth Tanner, sensational start off the grid, and he's sitting right up there with this leading duo. Lowndes has effectively uh, pulled off that move on the inside of Mark Scape. So this is it. Here comes Scape now, back around the outside from Shell Mastercard. Oh, oh, around there. Oh, 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 that'll get Tanner through. Hey, this is getting serious. Scape comes back on the brakes up the inside of the Melbourne in Commodore. Scape. He's got two wheels up on the curbs as he bounces up the inside of the young Western Australian driver, gets himself back into second position. Now it's Tander in third, Paul Radisic on the attack in fourth, Nick Johnson in fifth, and the Pertec Falcon of Hidden Valley winner Jason Bright. He's in sixth. Russell Ingle has come up from 11th position. He's well placed also. He's uh, got through on about three or four cars. Jeff Gresh is on his third podium. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's run out of fingernails already, I think. I want to see that between I bet he's on the radio now saying, right, that's enough, you two. Yeah, take it easy, just take it easy, you two. Let's have a look at the replay of the start from inside Russell Ingle's oh, car. Oh, look at that. Very slow start from the wins Commodore. So Ingle goes across the white line, hammers up the inside. And look at Dick Johnson. DJ, 17. brilliant start from DJ. He really did hook up. Oh, look, not a lot of room there, is there? Gone blasting up the side of Glenn Seaton, and there's Radisic, you can see, just to the left. So, and Russell Ingle, a tremendous start. Went right through on the inside of Greg Murphy. So, they complete another lap. It is still Craig Lowndes who leads the way. Scaife in second, Tanda third, the two shell helix cars, Paul Radisic, Dick Johnson. Then we go back to Jason Bright in the Pertec Ford, Russell Ingle, Glenn Seaton, Larry Perkins, Cameron McConville, and Jason Barguana, who has stormed up from 17th to 11th. Uh, oh, Scaife, he didn't exactly lay over room with his feet in the air, give it up, did he? It's going to be interesting to watch the pace of Lowndes, though, because yeah. he just did a 1-12-7-3. He's the only man in the 12 second bracket that last time around. Scaife back to second at 1.13.9, but he got tangled up with Tanda a little bit there. That would have slowed him down. Paul Radisic in fourth position. Johnson up to fifth. Great run from DJ in his last race in front of this Sandown crowd. Here comes uh, Jason Bright as we have a look at the points after race two. Scaife on 100, Lowndes on 92, Radisic 86, and then we've got three tied there. Bright oh, no! Oh, 
look at Russell. Big coming. <laughs> no, there was late breaking and late breaking <laughs> and there's panic breaking. Yeah. He had everything lit up there. A major barbecue happening under the Silver Commodore. He just, I think he might have tagged the back of the Pertec yeah, Ford, but yeah. not enough to turn him around. This will be interesting here. Dick Johnson's coming under siege from Jason Bryant, and then we saw exactly how serious Russell Ingall is about getting past the Pertec Ford as they complete another lap in early days yet, and this has probably been the best race we've seen of the day so far. Well, so I spoke to Paul Radisich after heat two, and he was saying that, yeah, the car's got plenty of horsepower, but the Mobile Holton Racing Team cars just put it down a little better than us. That's where they're having the problems. The wheel spin coming out of turn four under that long back straight, it's absolutely critical, and that's why he wasn't able to bridge the gap, even though he was actually doing, on several occasions, faster lap times than the leading Mobile Commodores. Let's go with Dick Johnson. Here is the in-car shot for Shell Helix Racing. He's got Jason right, right up in his uh, bottle, so he's going to be uh, looking in the mirror pretty well, conscientiously to make sure Jason looks like he's in a real hurry to get past him. All well, the fans may be saying goodbye to Dick Johnson, the 54-year-old Ford hero, but he's really turning on it, turning it on at Sandown in his final drive, right up behind his younger teammate Paul Radisic. And DJ's really pumped up for this one. Four, four victories, four career victories here, not including, of course, the 500-kilometre races here for Dick. And, uh, well, it is a special place. He's done a, a great deal of racing here at Sandown. So he says goodbye. He's been enjoying his farewell tour. And Russell Engel is enjoying the battle with Jason Bright at the moment, looking to make one position better and get up into sixth. Loundscape Tanda Radisic. Johnson, Bright, Ingalls, Seaton, Perkins and McConville into the top ten now. Russell in a hurry. I'll tell you what, Craig Lowndes is in a hurry too. A 1.11.81 that time around. Scape was only a tenth slower, but Lowndes has put 1.7 seconds on Scape that previous lap. So you give this guy clean air, he just rocks away. We ride with Russell Ingall at the moment. His mission is to get by on Jason Bright. Now keep in mind, Ingall has come from 11th into 7th, so we saw where he got those four quick places off the start. Jason's car's pretty um, pretty nippy down the straight. Yep, no shortage of grunt from the Pertec Falcon camp a little. The boys up there in Queensland working very, very hard on engine development. Oh, that's a pain in the backside, the sun uh, there yeah. in, in the west. John, John Bell, meanwhile, is up to 19th position. Don't forget he started off the back of the grid. He was very, very quick in the opening heat. He finished third behind the two mobile holders. Had a fan build through, a fan build in heat two. Had to come in retire. That started him off the back of the grid, but he's really launching his way through the field. 19th after starting right back in 32nd. Well, pleasing to see the two Shell Helix Fords up there. It's been a, a very slow start to the year for them, and they've had to go through a big development process with not only the new tyres, but two new cars and one new driver in Paul Radisic. There's Cam McConville in the Warwick Fabrics Commodore, which is, of course, the John Faulkner VS. Cameron's racing for this round and the next two. He will go to Queensland Raceway on Willowbank, and he'll also do the call the park round here in Victoria. He's being chased by Jason Barguana in the Gary Rogers Valvoline Cummins VT Commodore. Barguana, who showed early signs of a very promising result in race two, had a tangle with Jason Bright and the front left deflated. They had to, he had to come in and change that, and that's what sent him back to the back of the pack, and he worked his way in the 17th at the end of race two. I love the zip down the middle of... Uh, yeah, I was going to say that. It's great looks like, looking. It? It looks like his zip's coming undone, though. It's almost down to the, the, the grill now. Bishop, yes. So, a uh, bit of a VAR Formula One idea there, split personality. Greg oh, look Murphy. at the damage on the front of Greg Murphy's car. Boy, that's... Now, what if that car's going to overheat? It looks very similar yeah. to the damage that Russell Ingall copped the Hidden Valley. And uh, at the end of that race, he destroyed that engine. So, let's hope that things hang together for the wins team. There's Cameron McLean, the sensation of V8 Privateers in 1999, the ex-Dick Johnson Racing Falcon. Still and not sure the horsepower that thing, is it? Really? No, it's just using an ex-Dick Johnson racing engine. And uh, no shortage of squirt, we saw that yesterday. Talking in the Privateers Cup. Talking with Peter Turk from Shell Helix Racing, he said it would have been interesting. He said, I would have loved, just as a, as a project, to get up to keep this car and get it on Bridgestones and have it on Bridgestones last year to see what we could have done with it, because you know, they're, they're very pleased to see what Cameron and the Greenfield Mowers team have done as Longhurst makes a move now, pulls out of the draft as they enter the back straight. Larkham's not too far behind, Crompton, Forbes, and Bow is now up into 17th from the rear of grid. Well, there you go, you can just see him in the background there. Look at the speed of Kevin McLean's car. He's certainly hauling the mail in a straight line. Tony Longhurst tucked right up behind him and couldn't find a way past. And that's just raw horsepower and the car putting the power down very well out of that corner. So Longhurst has got his job cut out here because Kevin McLean 
He's proven himself a very, very good driver. Three Queenslanders in a row there. McLean from Brisbane and two Gold Coasters in Longhurst as he comes right up on McLean now and Larkin, who's tucked in behind him in the minor 10, 14, 15. That's exactly where he finished race two and where he remains in this third and final race at lap eight of 16 as we go on board with Larkin now. Well, he's just sitting in behind this battle. We were just watching between Cameron McLean and Tony Longhurst. They're fighting over 13th position. And Mark Larkin's really had an up and down season. Some tracks he's absolutely red hot. The next track, he's right back in the order. So he's just struggling to find some consistency in the minor 10 Ford in 1999. Here's his feet. We get a lot of phone calls and letters about that great shot. It is a really great shot. You know, really for people, people that know about motorsport, it's interesting. But I think for people that don't, uh, that don't know anything, to see the way you brake and change down, you know, your toe on the brake and your heel on the uh, on the throttle just to rip the engine so it doesn't lock it up uh, coming into corners, mate. It's a really good shot. Don't forget, too, that Mark was uh, a little unlucky earlier this morning because he was in 10th and he just got hit from pillar to pose. Yeah. He got hit about five times yeah. in race one. So it's not all... Uh, his the fault. Interesting thing you might notice too, if you look at your uh, rev counter on the right hand side of the screen and marks on the yes. straight, he's only revving it to 71, 7200 RPM. Although these engines are rev limited at 7,500, that last two or 300 revs is when the soft ignition cutout starts to come in, so the power tends to fall off just as you're coming toward the, the rev limiter. So you'll see these guys quite often shifting up to 7,200, 7,300, because there's really no point in revving the engine further than that. Back up the front, things haven't changed. Dingle hasn't been able to make any ground on Bright, and Seaton is still in there. Here we go. Scaife remains in seconds, up two seconds behind teammate Craig Lowndes. There he is, the current series leader. Will he make it? Three championships from three championships started. He's got two from two at the moment. An unbelievable winning percentage for this 24-year-old Victorian. There's your Shell Helix race score. Tander holding strong in third. It's been a great effort by Garth today. Radisic, Johnson, Bright, Eagle and Sink. We look further back. McConville still hanging on to that 10th position. We'll return with more on the Hyper Motorsport Network 10. Race three, the third and final, round six of the Shell Championship Series, and Lowndes has cleared out into XR6, XR8 corner. On the top end of the circuit, there's the gap. Well, we just about saw it. Back to teammate Mark Scaife. Now, must be a little bit frustrating for Scaifey because he's heading in the right direction for another round win, his third round win this year to add to Eastern Creek and Phillip Island. But, Mark, he's never won all three. No, his teammates had a few clean sweeps. You can see Lowndes flashing on the headlights there as he comes up to alert slower traffic that he's coming through. But, gee, I'll tell you what, he's going quick here. He's just brought the lap record down once again, a 1.11.65. That's the fastest time we've seen all day. And he's really, really attacking this Sandow track. Two seconds, the gap over Mark Scape. Another 2.3 seconds, the gap between Tander in third and Mark Scape in second. I enjoyed that... Uh a bit of a battle earlier. We saw how aggressive Mark Scape can be when Garth Tander dipped up on the inside and threatened to take his second position. And Scapey just turned it up an extra couple of notches and held by one, uh, rather Tander out. Radisic there, and now Bright has got through on Dick Johnson. So that has happened just in that last section of the track there because on our timing monitor they flashed across the line with Johnson still ahead of Bright. So it's the other way around now. The Pertec Ford has got ahead of the Shell Ford. Ingle still hanging in there behind. Seaton, Perkins and Barguana has now moved into the top 10. McConville dropped back to 12th and Murphy is in 11th. Yes, a good run from Tander. 22-year-old former Australian Formula 4 champion. Oh, Russell alongside oh, DJ. Yeah, good battle there between Johnson, Bright and Ingle. Fighting over fifth place. Very, very tightly bunched back behind them. With Cameron McLean at the front. He's still in 13th position. Well, a commendable effort by uh, the Valvoline Cummins Commodore, Jason oh. Mark Warner, as we jo join Seaton. There's Dick oh. Johnson right alongside, and it comes down to a breaking duel into turn one. Seaton will win this one and goes through one position oh. better. So Dick Johnson now back into oh. eighth position. They're fighting hard, though, in the Shell Helix Ford. Age shall not weary them. 54 years of age, but Johnson just driving like a tiger here. You can see he had a bit of top end in that. Shell Ford, they got toward the end of the straight, they were starting to haul him back. Seaton was beautifully positioned on the inside of the Shell Mastercard turn. And picked up another position, so 
Seaton has been struggling for speed today. He's been there, thereabouts, up in the top five, top seven cars, but nowhere near enough punch to be able to challenge Mobile Holden Racing Team. And we say it every round, that's because it's still a, a present problem for Dick. And we talk about his sinus problem, and we may even see it's a possibility that Dick might not race at Calder, and his son Stephen will replace him for that round because he's going to have to go into hospital and have another operation. What's that, number 15 oh, or something? He's oh, getting... I tell you, what, having that sinus all my life, and burger, etc., etc., when you get it, it's the biggest pain in the brain you've ever had, I tell you, because just to get rid of it, well, it's such a major. That's what Dick was saying, how much it affects his concentration behind oh, the wheel. He said that it's causing him so much pain that he starts noticing people moving in the spectator area or a, yeah. a little bit of rubber rolls across the floor in the car. He's, he's got his mind completely off the job because of the pain that he's feeling in the, the front of his head. Cameron McLean on screen there. He has moved up into 12th position and his top privateer. There's McConville in the Warwick Fabrics Commodore. Of course, Cameron will drive with the Mobile One Holden Racing Team at Queensland Raceway for the Queensland 500 and also at the FAI 1000 at Bathurst later this year. Driver lineup still haven't been confirmed whether McConville will drive with Scape or with Lowndes. And of course, he will join Paul Morris as well. Now, here's a Shell Helix replay of an earlier incident. Oh, what have we got here? Mark Noski. No, it's on Kelly hitting Scully. Dougal that's McDougal. That's... Oh, look, did he keep it out of the sand? Looks like he did. Oh, Kelly, I keep thinking of Scapey as 15. Well, they are the, uh, the whole HRT cars. And this is a tremendous battle here. You've got McLean, McConville, Longhurst, and we go back behind him to Mark Larkham. Now, Cameron McConville's giving McLean a nice old touch up here. Zippy. And he is surrounded by Fords. Oh, look at him. Here's oh, Mark Larkham, and, and Crompton is tucked in behind him. Here's the view from the back of Larkham's car with three laps to go. Well, Larkham's just been sitting back and having a look at this tremendous battle. It's a good drive from Cameron McConville. Getting back into the groove or keeping him well on the pace as the year passes so that when he jumps into those Global One Commodores later in the year, he's uh, got some race experience behind him for 1999. Oh, oh Mark look Warner. at that. Yeah, he's actually nice. out of the car. He's lost a lot of fluid there, yeah, it's yeah. like coolant or something. So uh, yep. he's not having a good day. That looks like it's on the back, over on the back straight there, doesn't yeah, it? I think he's just pulled, pulled it off. It's, I think he's on the uh, on the section of the circuit they don't use anymore. Yeah, over near XR8, XR6 corner. Oh, Oops. yes, something exciting. Oh, oh he's blown, he's blown, he's blown something. Like that's a shame. He's been having a terrible weekend. Yeah, so he's had a terrible year, hasn't he? Yeah. Really, really think about but an awesome drive in this last race because he's come from 17th to 10th. He just keeps going forward, and then something happens, and he goes back. This is your race leader, Craig Lowndes. Just to make a change. <laughs> <laughs> Two laps to go. Yeah, well, he's been absolutely dominant. The 25-year-old, originally from. Melbourne or Melbourne Districts. He now lives up in Queensland with his wife Natalie. He has been a sensation since he returned from a very unsuccessful season in Formula 3000 in Europe in 1997. A lot of people thought that he would have lost a lot of confidence and struggled to get back into the groove. From Heat 1 and Sandown in 1998, this man has proven he is right back on the pace. And his teammate from that year, Juan Montoya, currently leads the Kart World Series. So. Although they no longer are in the same team and are on opposite sides of the globe, they're both leading their respective championships. So Loud's on the way home. He'll come across in front of Mike Emery. And one more lap to go for Loud's. He's on his way home. And if Scape stays where he is, he will win round six of the Shell Championship Series. And that'll be a very pleasant boost for him in terms of the points. I can just imagine Bill Woods at home watching this, uh, saying there's no such thing as a wrecked Saab. Saabs <laughs> can't be wrecked. They're wonderful. <laughs> Russell Engel and Glenn Seaton. This is the battle for sixth position. Seaton in seventh at the moment. And Dick Johnson there, just ahead of Larry Perkins. That's eighth and ninth. Greg Murphy with uh, a big dent in his bonnet. Running in the top ten at the moment, courtesy of that Bargwana exit. And there's McConville under siege from Larkham and Crompton. I'm just amazed that didn't... De oh, look at this. There's a bit of a tussle going on here. Yeah, you've got John Bauer, who's come from rear of grid, up into 15th, uh, rather 16th position. So good work from the oh. Ken Ford. And that looks like Mark Noski, Noski. is it? Yes, it is. So Noski wanting to get through. 
and Thomas Mazira tagging onto the back of that uh, list of cars as well. But this is your man, Craig Lowndes. He won't win the day, but he will win the third and final and remain comfortably in the lead as Lowndes takes out the final race at Sandown. Scaife will take the day and around for third. Well done, Garth Tander. A handy result there. And Paul Radisic finishing in fourth. That will be good enough to put the rat on the podium. So, a successful day, not only for the Mobile One team, but the Shell Helix Racing team as well. Paul Radisic finishing in third overall on the day. A very commendable effort. That's great, because the CEO of Shell, who's a real motor racing fan, Roland Williams, is retiring from Shell today. So this is basically his, uh, his last, his last uh, motorsport uh, officially. But it's great to see uh, Shell up on the podium. There's Mark Scaife, three round wins, so he's won 50% of them. Well done, Scaifey. Finishing second behind Lowndes. Tander, another sensible drive. Holden, one, two, and three from Radisic, Bright, Eagles, Seaton, and Dick Johnson. Finishing in the top eight, well done to Dick. Perkins, Murphy, and McLean, top privateer. We'll be back right after this to wrap things up. Well, Jason Bright may have uh, fired the first blow for Ford at Hidden Valley. But I'll tell you what, Holden Racing Team has hit back with a sledgehammer at Sandown. An absolutely dominant performance which has sent the Holden fans into a frenzy. Right on cue. But a great day for the Fords as they try to close the gap on this dominant factory team. And a very strong performance in the privateer ranks from Cameron McLean. Well done, Cameron. That car's going particularly well. Yeah, we've been doing a lot of work. It's our best meeting of the year. Um, we're looking forward to the next one, the Greenfield Males Falcons performing as good as it has, and we're, we're delighted. Congratulations. See Cameron McLean in action at the new Queensland Raceway in two weeks' time. Another man who's been doing a great job for Ford this afternoon. He really is starting to get a handle on these shell Fords. That's the flying Kiwi, Paul Radisic. Come here, don't worry about, don't worry about the booze. Thank you. For more Holden fans and Ford fans out there, but gee, I'll tell you what, you're, uh, you're starting to get that thing into shape. Yeah, it's coming along and uh, it's great to be on the dais here. It's just bit by bit we've been uh, chipping away at it and the Shell Helix car is getting better all, all, the, all the time. Queensland Raceway, you had a run up there uh, a week ago or so, how's it looking? Yeah, it's looking real good. I mean, obviously we're starting with a, the home advantage, so I'm looking forward for the next round. Congratulations, Paul Radisic, expect to see a lot more of the Shell 18 Ford in action in 1999. Well. I said before, it was a sledgehammer. They really have smashed the opposition here today. The second part of that equation is our championship leader, Craig Lowndes. Doesn't seem to matter whether you win or Scafey wins, you blokes uh, are always at the pointy end of the field. Well, I guess it's a credit to the team. Obviously, they've done a fantastic job with my new car, but with all the cars we build, and uh, really it's a testament to them. Obviously, the cars are very even. Uh, Hidden, uh, not to say Hidden Valley, uh, Queensland Raceway, that's another new track for you blokes. Uh, how, you think you're going to be on the same form there? You haven't really tested there, have you? No, we haven't, and uh, really uh, hopefully we can get on the money early, and uh, really we hopefully we can get uh, the car up to shape, and, and that's what we'll be looking for. Congratulations, Craig Lowndes. Second today, as I call on James Atkins from our great series sponsor, Shell, to make the presentation to our overall winner today. He almost took a clean sweep, it wasn't for his pesky teammate, Mark Scaife. Congratulations. What a great drive. And I'll tell you what, that's really going to help your point situation. Well, obviously, uh, after Darwin, Mark, we did have a bit of a fight back. And uh, certainly the cars are very good here. It was a welcome return to form. And, uh, you know, I hope that young bloke just gives me a go for winning three in a row sometimes. I mean, he just knocks me off the last one each day. But, uh, I mean, it's obviously very competitive between us and we're, uh, we're really, really enjoying it. Congratulations, Mark Scaife, the big winner at Sandown International this afternoon. As we head to Queensland Raceway, anyone could win. <laughs>